Will electric vehicles destroy our power grid? You know, the immense system that generates and delivers electricity to your home and workplace. Well, this is a common question, and we will tackle it head on in this episode of EV Basics. We hear it all the time that electric vehicles are a scam and they're going to destroy our power grid. But is that really true? Well, on the surface at least, this seems like a reasonable assertion. I mean, critics say too many drivers plugging into charge all at once could overload the system and send us back to the dark ages. Shutting down coal and natural gas-fired power plants is already leading to energy shortages. Just look at California's role in blackouts. Renewables like wind and solar are unreliable. And finally, our electrical grid is far too old to support millions of EVs. And that last point is particularly frightening. As reported in a 2020 article from Public Utilities Fortnightly magazine, <laughs> yep, that's what it's called, the U.S. power grid is ancient. Quote, to say that the United States has an aging electric transmission infrastructure is a sizable understatement. The average age of the installed base is 40 years old, with more than a quarter of the grid 50 years old or older, end quote. Now, that sounds bad, and in some ways it is, but despite the age of our power system hardware, at least in the immediate term, we're in a better place than many people realize. Yeah, the electrical grid will not be destroyed by electric vehicles. Our electrical grid is old, and we've been dealing with a, a, a grid that was built ages ago and has not kept up with the times, even for regular stuff. I mean, we use a lot of electricity for everything anymore. So the grid itself needed to be upgraded to start with. And that's exactly what's happening. For instance, the U.S. Department of Energy's Building a Better Grid initiative, which is part of the bipartisan infrastructure deal, focuses on catalyzing nationwide development of new and upgraded high-capacity transmission lines. This is necessary because, according to the DOE, a whopping 70% of our nation's power lines are more than 25 years old. Additionally, Insufficient transmission capacity, especially transmission that facilitates the transfer of power across regions, presents another critical challenge. Upgrades and expansions will be funded by more than $20 billion in federal financing tools so every American can have access to reliable, affordable energy and internet access. These electrical grid improvements aim to enhance reliability and integrate cost-effective clean energy into our national power network to satisfy growing demand from all sources, including EVs. So electric vehicles will, will require some additional power draw from the, from the system, but it's not going to be to the point where it's, it's going to bring down our electrical grid in any case at all. Supporting this, a study published a few years back by the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory projects that through 2028, the overall power system looks strong enough to support up to about 24 million EVs. According to Sam, as of last year, there were roughly 292 million registered vehicles in the U.S., and about 1.3% of those are electric, so around 3.8 million vehicles. So it sounds like we have plenty of electrical capacity going forward. However, the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory also says that once we get to around 30 million battery-powered cars and trucks, things could become a problem if upgrades to our sprawling power network aren't made. The United States electric grid is arguably the largest interconnected machine on the planet. It has hundreds of thousands of high voltage transmission lines. It has millions of miles of distribution lines. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a big machine that's serviced by 9,000 or so generating points uh, that, uh, you know, are publicly held and, and privately held, and uh, some are cooperatives. But as complicated as our national electric grid is, power generation and distribution may not be the real issues for electric vehicles in the future. As it stands right now, the uh, uh, forecast from uh, companies uh, like McKinsey really only forecast about 107 
uh, terawatts of electricity being consumed by electric vehicles. And when you consider that currently the grid generates over 4,000 uh, terawatts, um, you know, which is a billion kilowatt hours. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's a small dent. The capacity of the grid, I don't think is going to be the major problem. As I see it, it's really going to be establishing the infrastructure. And one of the uh, key impediments to that right now is the fact that the transformers that are required for uh, fast chargers, you know, your 150 kW chargers and, and up, um, have a one and a half to two year wait time. Helping address the looming EV charging problem, Jim invented something called the wind and solar tower, a non-grid dependent machine that incorporates a vertical axis turbine with a top mounted solar panel. Power generating devices like this could help utility companies meet future electricity demand while also building resilience into the grid. What could also help is a technology called bi-directional charging. And this allows your EV to feed power into your home's electrical system or even the broader power network during blackouts or times of high demand. For added convenience, bi-directional charging is one of the features that will be supported by Wytricity wireless vehicle chargers. You know, you connect to the internet without a cable and you can wirelessly charge your smartphone, so why do you still have to plug in your EV? Well, the truth is, you don't. Wireless charging technology from Wytricity makes electric vehicle ownership simpler and far more convenient. Just park and your EV starts charging automatically. There are no bulky cables or clunky connectors to wrestle with. And this system is also safer than plugging in, and it's just as efficient as level two charging with a cable. You will want Wytricity wireless charging in your next EV, so for more information, scan the on-screen QR code or follow the link in the description box below. But back to the impact EVs will have on the electrical grid. For the time being, at least, it sounds like our power distribution network is more than up to the challenge of charging electric vehicles. Further supporting this point, the growth in new EV sales will not explode overnight. We're not going to completely and immediately switch from fossil fuels to electrics in three months. It ain't gonna happen. We're currently running around six to eight percent of the market, depending on where you are in the country, is being electric vehicles. Uh, there are parts of this country where you'll hardly see an electric vehicle and i drive to work every day and you know see a, it seems like every other car is an electric vehicle here this pr whole transition will take a long time we're only looking at about 40 to 45 percent of the market being electric by the early part of the next decade the transition will take a long time based on those projections power companies have some runway for making upgrades to meet future electricity demands you know, I mean, our utility system is um, uh, is relatively well funded. You know, with their with their uh, financial model, I think that they'll be able to raise the capital that's required to sell electricity, uh, sell additional electricity, and at even higher rates. For an even clearer picture of where we're heading, I reached out to DTE, my local power company here in Michigan, and they had the following to say. We are investing more than $1 billion annually over the next five years to upgrade and modernize the electric grid. And then blah, 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 new hardware will help support increased demand. But here's where it gets interesting. While EVs do not create issues at the current adoption level, there is a likelihood that additional planning will be needed to address loading as EV adoption grows. So DTE knows the electric vehicle adoption rate will increase and that upgrades are needed to meet growing demand. The company would not comment about what's happening at the national level, but other utilities are just as aware of what's coming, and so is the government. The bipartisan infrastructure bill signed into law back in 2021 includes billions of dollars to help clean up, strengthen, and expand our power network in what is touted by the White House as the largest investment in clean energy transmission and grid in American history. Aside from all that, if it's any consolation, this isn't the first time we've gone through a monumental shift in transportation. Something very similar happened around 100 years ago. From the turn of the last century till about 1915, 
there was a competition between electric vehicles, steam powered vehicles and gas vehicles. And it wasn't until the invention of the self-starter and mass production of the Model T that, like, that gasoline vehicles took the lead. It took years to develop our fossil fuels infrastructure. Drilling, pumping, refining, and transporting petroleum on a national scale didn't happen overnight, and our electrical network faces similar challenges. I am optimistic that the grid itself will be upgraded. It will take time. These these things move so slow. Uh, we, we talk about the glacial pace of, of things in the automotive industry, but it, it works in a lot of big industries like, like electricity. Entrepreneurs around the world come up with great ideas on uh, power generation, on power transportation, on all these needed parts of the, of the grid. And I fully expect all of them to step up and say, here's the greatest and latest new thing to, to upgrade our system and provide better power and better electricity to your home. Simply stated, if we were to wave a magic wand tomorrow and convert every vehicle on the road to an EV, the grid would not be ready. It would crash. But that's not what's going to happen. We are decades away from full-scale EV adoption. You know, I, I have no doubt that the utilities will be able to, to meet the load. I have very serious concerns about uh, the near and midterm of being able to establish the charging infrastructure that's required to provide the convenience that we've become accustomed to in you know, filling up our tank in three minutes. So will EVs destroy our power grid? Now, it seems like the answer is no, they will not. Despite its age, our electrical network still has capacity and there's room to grow. Big investments are being made to produce and distribute more electricity Future energy generation and storage solutions are being developed all the time. And finally, the EV adoption rate is projected to grow at a reasonable pace, so utility companies have time to upgrade their systems. Despite what certain cable TV pundits and politicians might say, it sounds like we're in a good place and things should get better going forward, so there's no need to worry about living in the dark ages. Next, watch our EV Basics episode about easy ways to reduce electric vehicle range anxiety. With a little planning and common sense, you don't have to worry about running out of juice. Click over here to learn the secrets right now.